two weeks after the Calvo Tenorio administration won their second term, they pushed through a massive retroactive pay raise. When Frank Uggen found out about it, he introduced a bill to roll those raises back. And as we saw earlier, it failed. But at least he did something. He tried. And over the next two years of the 33rd legislature, he tried several times to roll back the pay raises, only to be stopped by the Adeloupe and Adeloupe's supporters in the legislature, which also included uh, Dennis, Tina Munia Barnes, Rory Respicio. I bring those names up because we're going to see some of them in the senatorial races. But Frank persisted, and finally, in the first months of the 34th legislature, he succeeded in rolling back the pay raises. But that wasn't the only thing he has done for the people. He has fought GRRP. I couldn't get Tom Adda to hold an oversight hearing on GRRP, a group of well-connected political insiders raiding the taxpayers for the tune of up to $20 million. Couldn't get Tom Adda to address the issue at all. Frank Huggin stood up to GRRP, got the Attorney General involved, and we hope that their combined efforts will put GRRP to bed once and for all. Frank Huggins stood up for the people on the list at Chamorro Land Trust when he discovered that the members of the Chamorro Land Trust administration were taking property for themselves. He stood up and, re and fought against political corruption at that level. Looking at GMH, he is in favor of bringing in a receiver or a competent organization outside of Guam politics to handle Guam Memorial Hospital. He's the only one that is recommending a path that would lead to solving all the problems at Guam Memorial Hospital. So when we look at the current budget debate that's been going on, early on Frank Huggin introduced bills that would allow the governor to reprioritize the government and reorganize the government. The fact that Governor Calvo hasn't used him is another story. When we look at all the candidates running for governor, there is only one candidate that has a track record of standing up for the people of Guam on all these vital and issues, and his attitude is best summed up in this. You know, I also find myself in a... Uh like quandary because whether it's increasing taxes for one day or one year or indefinitely you know who's actually keeping this government operating it's the good taxpayers the individuals and the businesses that actually meet their obligations and pay their taxes on time we shouldn't be penalizing them by saying we're gonna take more of your hard-earned money from the taxpayers and say we're going to continue the operations of this government. Instead, Madam Speaker, we should be talking about imposing and collecting on penalties and interest rather than an amnesty. Yeah, we reflect on the $33 million that's going to be collected, but how much did this government, because these taxpayers did not meet their obligations on time, how much does this, this government have to forego? because it did not take the initiative to aggressively pursue collection of those taxes. That's one question we have to ask ourselves. We should really be talking about suspending business licenses. If you don't pay your taxes on time, you should not have an opportunity to be able to continue to conduct business. We know of a business that recently was announced publicly that owes this government $14.7 million. And that's reflective of three calendar years of outstanding tax receivables from that one business, Madam Vice Speaker. That big business had no reason to be operating if they were not meeting their tax obligations. And it, you know, I had a older gentleman that came up to me about paying his real estate taxes. 
and he said that he approached an individual at Revan Tax and asked him by any chance he could work on an arrangement. And you know, Madam Vice Speaker, that individual was instructed or asked or encouraged and urged to meet that obligation. Even though it was a small amount, but this individual was asking for additional consideration. And this individual is not a business person. Retired individual living on a fixed income. So if we're, for, we're forcing good taxpayers to continue to run and operate this government, Madam Speaker, whether it's one day or one year, we should not be asking them to pay more. We should be going after collecting what is due and imposing the penalties and the interest and taking it one step further and prosecuting these individuals so that we don't have to put the stress and the undue burden on all of these other individuals who are keeping this government in operation. So Madam Speaker, I certainly, like I said a little earlier, have some concern about this because I don't think it's, we should be imposing any additional taxes on our good paying citizens out there who pay their taxes on time. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. For that reason, Guam Citizens for Public Accountability is recommending that everybody out there who's registered to vote and votes on the Democratic side of the ticket vote for Frank Hogan for governor. Next week, we will be releasing our recommendations for the legislature, the Attorney General's office, the Office for Public Accountability, and for the Congressional Delegate.